All right, in this video, we're going to make a miles per gallon uh, calculator. We're going to receive some input from the user. Uh, we're going to look at how to use a formula uh, to do a miles per gallon calculator with using input from the user and getting a uh, specific uh, answer based on uh, their input. So we're going to do a Windows Forms application. We're going to call it miles per gallon, and we're going to go ahead and get that started. Okay, so I'm going to resize my form, make it a little bit uh, bigger here so I have some room to work with. We can always uh, change it later. I'm going to change this where it says Form 1. I'm going to go over to my Property Windows, and I'm going to call it Miles Per Gallon Calculator. Make it look a little more professional. That way, when a user actually uses it, it says Miles Per Gallon Calculator. Uh, that way, instead of Form 1, it'll look a little more uh, professional. Uh, I need a button so the user can exit. Uh, that's always a good button to start with. So I'm going to click on my toolbox and you're going to get a list that looks like this. I'm going to click on all Windows forms just so I can see every single tool that's available to me and I'm going to double click the button. I'm going to go click back on my form. I see my button and the first thing I want to do is rename the name of this object. The text is what the button says, but I need to rename the actual object, which is uh, the button. So I scroll down to the name field in my properties window, and the prefix we use for button is always BTN, and I'm going to call this exit. Now, what I need to do is actually change the text of the button to say exit. That way, the user knows what it's actually uh, doing. So I'm going to type in exit. All right, there we go. So uh, this won't do anything. I got to add some code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the exit button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do application dot exit and then end. And what that will do is it will shut down uh, my program. So uh, we can go ahead and do some uh, testing real quick. It's going to build the program. And we have the program here. I click on exit. And it exits, so that's working. Uh, we said we were going to do a miles per gallon calculator. We need an input from the user, so I'm going to need a text box that they can actually input information into. So I'm going to need a text box. And what we can do is we can make this about the size that we want to, and that looks pretty good. I can start resizing my uh, form now because it doesn't need to be uh, massive. And I need to let them know what this text box is uh, for, so I'm going to need a label. So I'm going to go over here, scroll up. This is listed in alphabetical order. There's two labels, a label and a link label. Go ahead and click on label. We're not making any um, any links here. Drag this uh, label over, over. And what I need to do is I need to name these uh, two objects. So this label, we need to change the name of the object. And I'm going to say uh, label. And we need to know their uh, tank size. So I'm going to call this tank size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up. And I'm going to put, uh, change that back, tank size. And I'm going to put a colon here. Now this lets the user know, hey, put your tank size right here. Make this a little bit smaller because it doesn't need to be that big. And you can adjust this to however, uh, however you would like. You can always uh, do it at the end. I like to do it as I uh, as I go along, just to you know, just make it look nice, not too overwhelming. I also need to name this uh, text box. We're changing the name of the text box from text box one to txt, which is the prefix, and this is going to be tank size. Now, when you're naming the object, you cannot use spaces. If I put a space between tank and size, and try to use that it's going to give me an error. So if you're getting that error, it's because you have a space in between. So now I've named it text tank size. So now that I have these two objects and their names properly, if I want to make it the same size, what I can do here is I can um, select both of these. I can copy and paste them in. But before I do that, I want to make this label a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my properties and I'm going to change the font and you can change the font to uh, whatever you want. Um, let's see here. I like to use Rockwell and I'm going to make it about size 12. Now it's a little bit bigger and you know a little easier to read. So what I now that I have what I want I can hit control C 
Control V to uh, paste it in. And I need to change the name of this label. So I'm going to scroll down to its uh, name. And I just passed it. And I need to know how many miles they've gone. So I'm going to call this label Miles. And then I'm going to scroll up to the text. And I'm going to type in Miles Traveled. That way we know we want to get how many miles they have uh, traveled. Reorganize this here. That looks pretty good. And the last thing, I, or the other thing I need to do is change the name of this text box. And we're going to change this to TXT Miles Traveled. Okay, we need one more uh, text box and label, which is going to be the output. So this will be the result. So I'm going to scroll down and change uh, the name. Make sure only one is uh, selected. If you have both selected, the name will not uh, show up. And I'm going to change this to label uh, result because I'm going to output the result there. So I'm going to go here, change the actual text field to result, put a colon. And then I can put that right about there. And then here, the text box, I need to change it from text box 3 to TXT, or text box 1, because I've already renamed the other two, text results. OK, so I have uh, my form here. We can always go back and uh, change it later and make it look like however uh, we want. So now what I need to do is actually uh, make it do something. And when I'm looking here, there's one thing I'm missing, which is a calculate button. So I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, this button here, and I'm going to change it its name to BTN Calculate, because the user needs a way to uh, calculate what they're what they're doing. And then I'm going to go up, change the text field from Exit to Calculate. Okay, now I'm looking at my form. It looks like we have everything we need. So uh, we need to do some calculations. Now I don't know. Uh, what they're going to enter for their tank size. I have no idea what they're going to enter for miles traveled. And I don't know what the result is going to be because it's based on tank size and miles traveled. So this means I need some variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click uh, my form. And this comes up to form load. What I need to do is go to the very top. You'll see we have public class form one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the enter button. Give myself some uh, space and some room. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, going to dimensionalize some variables. Uh, you might hear some people say dim means dim. Uh, no, it doesn't. Dim means dimensionalize. So the first thing we're going to need is a number for the tank size. Because it's a number, I'm going to dimensionalize that as an integer. And there's a prefix we use for integers. And that is int. And then I'm going to do tank size as integer because it's a number I'm going to be working with. I don't have to call it int tank size. I can call it whatever I want. The int is standard programming practice to label or to use an abbreviation before each prefix name so you know uh, what it is, especially as your programs become larger. I'm also going to need another number for the miles uh, traveled. So I'm just going to do dim int miles as integer. And then what I need to do is I need the result. So int result as, now you might be saying as an integer, but we're not always going to get a whole number. So what we're going to do is instead of doing it as an integer, we can still get a number. We're going to do it as a decimal. That way we can get some, if we don't have an exact whole number, it won't round up or down for us. It'll give us a more precise answer. And then the other thing I'm going to need is to make my program look just a tad more uh, professional is str exit as string. And uh, this is what I'm going to use because I don't know if the person really wants to exit or not. Um, so we'll do uh, that right down here. So what I need to do is I need to load whether or not they want to exit their program. So I'm going to do str exit equals. And we're going to create a message box. And inside my first set of quotes here, I want, I want to ask them the question, are you sure you want to exit? I'm going to go to the end of the quotes. I'm going to put a comma. This will allow me to insert some, but some uh, buttons. So I'm going to do VB 
yes or no. We don't need yes, no, cancel. They either do or they don't. There's no reason to have cancel there. So what happens is when this message box runs, the user can click yes or the user can click no. Depending on which one they, it doesn't matter which one they select. If they hit yes, that's going to be stored in my str exit variable. If they click no, that's going to be stored in the str exit button. Um, if they hit yes, then I want the program uh, to exit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an if statement. If str exit equals vb yes, then, and I already have my code here, application.exit end, and then end if. So here's, here's what I have. If they hit yes, which is stored in my str exit, then we can shut down. If not, the program will keep uh, running, and that's why I have str exit. I got to be able to store if they put yes or no. All right, so let's do the actual calculating uh, result. I'm going to double click on calculate. I'm in my button calculate click. So here's what we're going to do. We need to take whatever is in this text box and store it into the tank size variable. We need to take whatever is in this box, text box, and store it into the miles uh, variable. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my variables that I just created and I'm fixing to store something into both of them. When they click calculate, I'm going to take text, tank size, and this is why we rename text boxes rather than leaving it text box one. We know what we're working with here. So when you do text tank size dot text, you need to have that there because you have to select the uh, property. And what we're going to do is we need to store that inside of a variable. Because we're storing it inside the variable, we need to put the variable on this size, on this side. All right. So when I look at this, here's how it's read. Whatever is here is going to go into what is on the left hand side. So I'm taking what is uh, inside the text box for tank size. I'm storing that into the variable and I need to do that for the miles as well. So int miles equals txt miles traveled and I can't leave just text miles traveled. There's lots of properties. I need to let the program know which property and I want to use the text. Now once I have that I need to do something with it. So I have these two numbers because I took what was in tank size uh, text box. I stored that. So this variable is holding a number. I took what's stored in this text box, put it into the int miles variable. It's holding a number. So I need to do something. So I'm going to take my int result. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my miles traveled and I'm going to divide that by the int tank size. So that's going to give me a result. However, I need to put this result inside this text box. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do text result dot text equals int result. And here's what happens. I have to use this calculation first. Once I use this calculation and get the result, I can store that result in the text box. If I put this after this, nothing's going to show up. It'll show up zero because Visual Basic and all programming languages read code line by line. So make sure you have it in the uh, correct order. So with that, it should work. So we're going to go ahead and uh, test it and it will work. So what we'll do is we'll say we have a tank size of uh, 10 miles or 10 gallons miles traveled, we'll say 450. And when we calculate that, we get 45 miles per gallon. So it looks like it's uh, working well. If I click exit, I should get a message box. Are you sure you want to exit? I hit no. All right, program still running. I hit yes, and it shuts down. That is uh, how you do it. So we introduce some variables that can uh, that we can use to control what the user is uh, entering or uh, do something with what the user is entering. And we also used uh, some math manipulating those variables by uh, dividing using some basic math here and showing how we can put that in the text box. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment below. If you have any ideas uh, for future uh, videos, uh, you can leave a comment below. We'll see you guys next time.